I thought we were going to be out of school for maybe a week or two. I thought we'd be right back. I never would have expected in my life to, for everything to go this long. I don't feel like I'm the same teacher that I've been for the past 21 years. And it's, it, it's like reading a, a book. You read a, read a book, then all of a sudden you watch the movie version, yeah. and you're like, wow, that's not how I pictured that. That Friday, <laughs> everybody's got this idea that we're not coming back. It was like, oh, I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in a couple days. And then it just kept going. I think that not knowing what was going to happen, and, and not only that, but you add school shut down to like stores are shut down and life is shut down. Um, I think it just felt really surreal. It's been really tough. Bad, to say the least, not fun. It's kind of been a tough year. Um, it's been a lot of school work. I've had to do a lot of work. At first, it was very difficult. It is. Yeah. It's tough. At first, first two semesters, I ain't finna lie to you. I wasn't learning none until I came here. First few weeks were rough trying to, uh, to adapt. How have things been in general? Um, I would say chaotic. Um, I think it's, it's been extremely challenging. Extremely challenging, professionally and personally. Um, and I'm ready to get to the new normal, however that's gonna look. In the beginning, it was a little stressful, a lot of stuff. I'd like to stay positive and say positive things, but boy, it was brutal. I really missed everybody. I missed students, I've missed family members. It is really tough, it's a lot of work. I've been overwhelmed. It was just very difficult that first nine weeks. We had such a good year and then all of a sudden it was like kaput. It was probably worse than my first year of teaching. And it's probably the most work I've ever done as a teacher. Just a lot of new things happening. You had to get used to it. And you get used to it. I got used to it. We will begin with March 13th, a time the world shifted, a shift that affected the individuals, staff, and students in a new way. These are the stories, the testimonies of those individuals who have worked through this new system, a new initiative, one that is skeptical, no doubt, and could pave way for a new wave of teaching. I think I kind of thought it was going to be two weeks. I, rem I remember that day, and I remember my last class leaving, and I was like, see you someday. I never would have expected in my life to, for everything to go this long, and I'm absolutely happy to be back. No, I did not expect it to be as long as it has been or as, as tragic for those who lost people. Um, who lost jobs, who lost homes, you know. Um, I, it's just, no, I, I really didn't expect it to be as, as bad as it was. Well, when, like they said, oh, you don't have to come back in two weeks, we can come back. It was like, oh my gosh, no school. But then, like, it went longer. And it was like, yikes, like, we can't do anything about it either. So like, you couldn't finish anything, you couldn't do anything. When I first heard about it, it was almost like a game. Like, oh, we get a couple of days off from school, this is gonna be great. And then, you know, even like, even that Friday, <laughs> everybody's got this idea that we're not coming back. It was like, oh, I'll see you in two weeks, I'll see you in a couple of days. And then it just kept going. So yeah, I, I had no idea it was gonna be like this. I, I was very skeptical. And then when they kept extending it and extending it, 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 it just seemed surreal that we were just at home for the rest of the year last year. I, I thought, okay, this will be over in about a week and a half. We'll be back to school, and then it just kept going and going and going. And then we were off for the summer, and I thought, well, surely next year we'll return as usual, but we haven't. So did I think it was going to happen for a year and a half? No but I did feel this kind of tidal wave of something ominous kind of happening. It was scary, there's no doubt. Yeah, I remember last year, March 13th, was Friday, March 13th, Friday 13th, I believe it was, uh, last year, uh, the superintendent got on the loudspeaker and says, you know, we will be here Monday. We had the conference with the, the, the governor of Pennsylvania and we'll be you know, here Monday. Uh, so a lot of teachers left their 
computers in the classroom because we're coming back Monday or left some things in the classroom. And, uh, you know, when we left school, I actually took my computer home just in case, but I didn't take my Elmo home, which hurt me for the last nine weeks last year. Uh, but I was picking up my son at baseball practice and uh, then all of a sudden you got the word of, you know, school's closed, school's closed. And I'm like, okay, well, it'll be closed for maybe a week or so. Uh, then it was, you know, I think Easter was early last year. So I'm like, well, okay, well, maybe we'll be, we'll go back right after Easter break. We'll go back after Easter break. And, you know, as Easter went through and, and I'm like, oh man, I can't believe this is lasting this long. I expected it to just be two weeks. I thought it was something that was going to you know, kind of came in and, you know, we would figure out how to deal with it. We'd be back in uh, the building. Yeah, I thought we were going to come back. I didn't know it was that serious and we were going to stay longer. A, a crazy thing about it is students started talking to me w way before. That's actually how I learned about the whole corona and all that stuff. So when it came about, I just kind of figured, oh, this is just going to be a little bump in the road and we'll be back in no time, and boy, was I wrong. It's funny, I told my, my kids when I got home that day, my two students who are now juniors and seniors, I said to them, I said, the school year's over. I did, I did, I did make that prediction. I'm not right on a lot of predictions, but I did make that prediction. At that point, we thought we were coming back, but then we didn't, and I, I don't know. Um, I don't know that I, ex I'm gonna be honest, I don't know that I expected, it was a really nice break. Um, <laughs> that first week was a really nice break. And I was like, I felt like it was spring break, which was kind of crazy. But then I think that not knowing what was going to happen and, and not only that, but you add school shut down to like stores are shut down and life is shut down. Um, I think it just felt really surreal. We kind of joke like, oh, we wouldn't mind taking like a two week break, like just to like refresh a little bit and come back to finish the year. And then when you saw how serious it was, so, and I had left my computer at school that day, and when they made the announcement everything was shut down, I'm like, I can't get back up to school in time to get my stuff. So actually for the first week, because I didn't have a laptop or anything at home, I had to use like my little tablet to make up assignments, do assignments. So it was very difficult until I could get like my flash drive and everything and figure out how to do Google Classroom. So I, no, I did not expect to be home for the rest of the year at all. Part of me thought we were gonna be gone the whole school year. When those first kind of reports started coming out in November, December, like, you know, we were chatting about, yeah, this is pretty serious. I kind of had a feeling that this was going to be something serious. So March 13th rolled around. Um, I was here trying to get, get some things done and took some things home with me. And I thought it might be two weeks or a month. Um, I never anticipated it being the whole rest of the school year. It seemed like we were doing such a good job for those first couple weeks or first couple months that it was like, okay, maybe there is a chance we would come back before the end of the school year. But I think being so late into the school year, it was kind of like, all right, two weeks didn't make sense. All right, well, a month doesn't make sense. All right, well, now it's kind of like, just do the rest of the school year this way. We have our classes and I'll have maybe 10 kids or 15 kids in the classroom while I'll have another 15 or 20 kids that are remote or learning from home. Uh, so I run online or live, excuse me, live classes so the kids can at home can tune in live uh, and watch that. But because I run live classes, I kind of use my Elmo, my uh, Elmo, which is a document uh, camera where I can write it, write it on a piece of paper and do the math problems, the math examples. And uh, instead of traditionally, you know, putting it on, you know, being in front of the classroom, writing on the, on the, the, the board, the whiteboard and so on. So I'm kind of stuck here at my desk because, you know, the kids in class can view what I'm writing at the front of the room on the board and the kids at home can view it on their computer screen. Uh, so that's a little bit different, not being able to kind of work the room, you know, walk around the room, making sure you know, looking at everybody's computer screens and things like that. So being kind of stuck here at the desk for a lot of the period uh, makes it different. I've never ever had to rely on so much technology before to teach because I have students at home 
And while I'm teaching them, I have students here at school, and I'm recording it for students to watch it at a later time too. And it's a lot to remember at one time, teaching that way and the math content and questioning strategies, and it, it, it's a lot at one time to remember. I probably worked harder during that shutdown than I did like all year last year because I had to figure out how to prepare my kids for an AP exam and I wasn't allowed to talk to them because we weren't allowed to meet. So that to me was really, um, really tense. Like I would meet in the evenings with Mr. Darcy sometimes. We would meet on a call because I was allowed to talk to him. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, I don't know what to do. And he would like kind of talk me off the ledge a little bit where it was like, hey, relax. Like you're doing what you can. Um, but I was trying to find like, what's the best way to, to, to get my kids ready because they still had to take that test. And I had, I want to say at least 60 of them taking an exam that they paid for that I really wanted them to do well on. And I was like, that wasn't shut down. Some of it is uh, learning technology, some advances that I was not aware of, um, kind of with Skyward and Teams and Microsoft. Wasn't it? So technology was a big jump um, for us all in the guidance department. Also, just not seeing my kids daily um, and still trying to maintain a relationship and gain a rapport has been a, a challenge. We had to make changes not only in the beginning of the year, but midway through the year and finishing up the year, we had to make some changes. And I think those changes, even though they were good to a point, but um, yeah, they, it, was, it was pretty tough. It was tough. It has um, been challenging at times, especially towards the beginning of the school year. Uh, I think everyone was getting used to like our new normal way of communicating with one another uh, via Teams, via Zoom, things of that nature. I think as the year has progressed, both students and staff have gotten used to um, communicating differently. I have students I've never seen their face all year, which is so strange to me. And that's what's made teaching challenging too. I, could, I used to be able to read people and I'd be able to read the room and I could say, oh, you look really, really confused or it looks like you don't understand. And now I have like a lot of times like dead silence. So I'm like, okay, I've got to ask, do you understand? Do you understand? And I have to trust that they do understand if they're not asking a question, that's hard. Man, computer problems, computer be breaking, Microsoft's it will be working sometimes. I think it's difficult to be a uh, tele school counselor. Um, you don't have the same feeling as, you know, you don't get to look in students' eyes necessarily and see what they're thinking and feeling um, when you get to know them, of course. And then there's that part about getting to know somebody. It's really difficult um, to do that electronically. You know, when you see people, we had the opportunity to walk through the halls to be in, in the cafeteria doing our, our cafeteria duty. And, and even just in passing, you know, there's opportunity to actually build that relationship and that, that trusting and respecting bond um, that I think school counselors should have with their students when, when they're here in person. It's, it's very challenging to do that via telephone, call, or even video conferencing. It's not the same feeling. And I, I just feel like I've lost um, a year or so of, of that relationship with my students. It was difficult, uh, especially uh, as a social worker. It's... Um, the in-person relationship really, really helps build trust. It, 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 it is important to, I think, um, have that opportunity to look at one another, to you know, gauge it, it, um, emotions, and um, that was a very difficult uh, aspect for me. Biggest challenge, and th that I'm just not used to yet, is really getting to know my students. Because some of them are fine by themselves online, and really don't need a lot of attention from me. Some of them do need a lot of attention from me, but it's just not the same as having everybody in the class at one time and being able to walk around the room and tell jokes and, you know, can everybody just do these three problems real quick? Because students at home are watching it later. I don't know if they're doing the problems real quick. Um, moving to electronic assignments was a little challenging, not being allowed to use paper and things like that. Um, video teaching, um, having meetings with students, uh, the toughest aspect was getting students to join meetings and having students complete assignments on time. And just trying to keep up with all my virtual students so they have the same education as everybody that's coming into the building every day. It's just difficult though 
having both at the same time, having the kids in the classroom and having, during the same class, kids at home. It has almost, it's scary on how it's kind of created your student body. I talked to almost in a, it's almost a comatose state, you know, I mean, I can't, even here, kids are here at this point, are really beat up. Um, it's really taken a mental health aspect that I was not ready for. Um, and some of my strongest students. Trying to make sure that the, the kids at home are included is, is, a, is something that has changed a lot. Trying to figure out ways to have relationships with them at home has been tougher. The students are basically teaching themselves. It's more like college. My biggest struggle is how to motivate students to be self-motivators. I think that that was probably the biggest issue, is just trying to get students motivated to do uh, the general assignments, tasks, um, and especially for the virtual students. How do you reach out to them and, and make them motivated, get them interested? I'll be happy uh, if most of them return, understanding that everybody's not going to be comfortable with that, but I'm looking forward to them being back in the building and bringing that life and energy that students bring. I feel for this class who are in school right now because especially in high school, you guys have sort of missed your meet, your 10th and 11th grade year for me. A lot of information is given to you guys. And, and I'm, I'm gonna be interested in how you all reflect on it 10 years from now. Is it something that sort of part of your life? It was like uh, high school, I never really had that experience. I'm gonna be really interested to hear about that, you know, in 10 years from now, what you guys refer to as your high school experience. Well, definitely everything that we used to do in my class was hands-on handwriting, paper and pencil right in front of us. So um, none of my kids have held a pencil in the classroom at all. So that's huge. I had to take everything that we did with paper and pencil and I had to make it digital, which is hard because trying to annotate on a passage where you would normally circle and underline um, is really challenging on the computer. So. That has had to change. Um, I usually do a lot of group work in my classroom. We had to figure out how to do group work. So, I mean, you, we, we use Google Slides to meet in there. Um, we do have some breakout rooms, but I've had to be creative with some of the, some of the instructional methods, some of the strategies, some of the activities. Um, a lot less outside of class work because we have to depend on technology, which is not dependable. So I think it's changed everything. And not only that, I feel like I have to teach how to use technology at the same time I'm trying to teach how to break down a rhetorical prompt. So I think it's changed everything. For me, my biggest problem was just communication with families. Working from home, I get distracted way too easy. It was particularly taxing because um, I had seniors last year and I was not able, and after four years of being with, you know, them, um, it was disappointing not to be able to say goodbye, to wish them well, to tell them how important they were to me. Although I think I've done that throughout their years of being with me. Um, but to see their families cheer them on into the next, um, phase of their lives, um, it was, it was really hard, you know, it was really hard. I start crying around, you know, Thanksgiving time or like start reminiscing and thinking back um, uh, around Thanksgiving of my students' senior year because it all just kind of, you know, that's when the stuff gets real and they're, you know, applying to colleges and they're ordering their caps and gowns and they're doing this and planning parties and prom and, and I just, I feel bad um, for them that they didn't get to experience their senior year as it should have been. Last year was much more difficult, I think, to navigate um, being at home and being away from students for, so, for such a long period of time. I knew it would have a little bit of an effect, but not this big. Now talking to them virtually has been difficult, um, especially when kids aren't showing themselves on camera. I said, I'm gonna, you guys are going to come back to me next year and I'm not going to recognize you. Um, you know, adolescents grow and mature. I mean, I, they left me as like... 10th graders are going to come back as seniors. They're going to be six feet taller and beards. You know, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> uh, so that's going to be interesting. If you're a student at home, all you really have to do is snap a picture of something and send it to a million people. 
if you're at home. Now, if you're a student here, it's not, it's gonna be, you know, very hard to cheat, you know, because if, if we go back to paper and pencil tests and all that, then it'll be just like old times where I'll be here watching you and et cetera, et cetera. But if you're at home, I have zero control over that. Yeah. And that, that's, that's another hard part too. Friends that I have at other school districts who are teachers and my wife is a teacher and they all say the same thing. How they're, unless somebody comes up with a way other than meeting with each student individually and giving them a verbal exam over the computer, we, we don't really know what to do, but that would take how many days? Trying to manage online and in person at the same time. Um, it's like a two-man job and I'm do actually I think it's like a 10-man job and I'm doing it with one person. So I feel like things in general are kind of crazy and you know you're just trying to manage everything. It's much different than you know you don't have the classroom activities it's just here's an assignment do it turn it in. Um, the creation of online assignments learning teams especially Microsoft OneNote which has been great for me in anatomy with labeling and identifying um, parts of the body and structures. Um, just gives me a great way to connect with uh, students online with the Microsoft OneNote. I established a routine. I still got up at the same time every morning, um, checked my email, interacted with students all day. I would say uh, synchronously teaching. I think that having daily meetings with students, I'm able to, I actually, feel like I know some of my students. I feel like, although I don't know what they look like, my hearing has improved. As the year has gone on, it has gotten easier once you figure out how to do stuff, you know, with the technology and that. I can't tell you how many times I've had a parent and student email me to say, Mr. Hack, thank you for recording your lessons so we can watch them at a later time so then they don't miss anything live. The YouTube series that we ran on colleges and, and um, vocational schools and military was was an interesting one that we could use um, the, in future years. Just another thing to put your hands on and get information and collecting information. So I was very proud of that, that, that we ran with you and Mr. Maranzell in the video productions room this year. Um, and, and just communicate, communication and collaboration with my colleagues in order to kind of help you all as the student body. The most successful uh, thing that's working for my classes at least is having the live uh, classes online for people that are at home can view and ask questions live while being online. I'm also recording my classes so I'll record the class while we're here uh, in class and, and then I will post that recording in Teams. I'll post it in Teams so if anybody missed it or if anybody needs to watch it again, they can go into the Teams channel for that particular topic and re-watch that video. So, you know, doing the live classes and recording those classes, I think is helping a lot of the remote students or the students in class that just didn't get it in class or if they missed the day, then they could watch it, you know, watch it from home. And then I made sure that I did some things around the house in the evenings, did some spring cleaning, and I really did a lot of walking just to keep myself active and my mind off of everything. Meeting every single day, knowing, knowing the students, um, forcing them to come to class, that has been successful because it actually feels like we're in school. I don't know that I would have been able to teach this class successfully if it was asynchronous. Like just giving you an assignment and saying go for it and then having 50 meetings. Like I really think that it had to be a live class and I think that was probably the most successful choice I made. I think the best was is is my learning process throughout this year. Uh, I learned that, you know, meets weren't necessarily the best way to give uh, instructions and demonstrations. I started using a couple different programs, Flipgrid, uh, and I think that that really helped students in the long run. And I had a lot of positive feedback, so I, I would say from student feedback, it was uh, different teaching methods. So I think the future of teaching is going to change. I think that um, we're going to rely way more on technology. I think that um, for students, it's going to give way more options because some students were really successful being remote. And 
maybe having a flexible class schedule where some days they come into school and some days they check in from home. So I feel like there's gonna be, high school might look differently in the future. Um, I feel like students are going to think of it as sometimes more of an independent type of education as opposed, because they've done it independently for a lot of the year. I think, yeah, I think the face of education has changed forever. And, and it may be some good aspects, some not so good um, things we have to adjust to and adapt to. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's forever a part of how we function. This is just the start of something kind of bigger or more normal than it has been in the past, and I could see it staying here permanently. More like, really, to be honest with you, more like a college class would do. You know, they have online versions of college classes or students can go to class on time. I think from now on it's going to be a lot of student choice as to how they want to have their school day. Myself, I personally would rather have 25, 30 uh, students in a classroom, but I think the mixed model of, or the mixed model of what we're doing now of teaching with technology, some students online learning and students in the classroom is going to be the way of the future. Um, I am very concerned about the social aspect of that with kids not coming to school. I, I hope not for the young, like, for my the young boys, then this ain't for everybody. It's here, it came on sudden, and it's not going anywhere. I'm sure there's some things that are going to be implemented that we found that are success in this that we could implement. But I do, I can't wait to get to in person again. Um, the energy that you guys bring to this building is important and vital to uh, the heartbeat sort of this place. I think teaching in the future will be maybe a hybrid of, you know, the remote and in class. Uh, I, I, I think it will have a combination of being in, in the classroom, uh, learning, asking questions of teachers, uh, but also being live online or watching the recordings, watching the videos and, and corresponding back and forth, you know, through email or through like Teams, Teams chat. I think for teaching, I think a lot of us are going to have to start really incorporating technology because there's so much out there, there's so much that we know that we don't have to be so reliant on paper and pencil and books and, um, you know, we can meet for five minutes virtually as opposed to setting up a face-to-face -face meeting. So I feel like there's a lot more that can get done in a day because of technology. I think it might be the future by the way they're talking about it, like keeping the computers for working and stuff, but I don't think it would be the better future. So I think it will be a hybrid of it. And I think there's certain, certain methods here work better for certain students. Some kids were successful, you know, learning strictly remote. Uh, other kids, you know, were not successful. And they need in school, they need in front of the teacher, they need with their peers, you know, in the classroom. So I think it'll be a, a mixture of both. School is just going to look way different. I mean, I really feel like things have changed tremendously. And I think that it's just going to keep changing. We're going to keep getting access to more technology. We're going to get better at it, um, learn new ways to incorporate it. And then students, too, are going to be really, really tech savvy, hopefully by the time that this ends. I'm glad at Penn Hills High School we did not end up shutting down and we came and we handled everything the right way or hopefully the right way and everything worked out for us. I really like coming to work every day. It's very hard to work from home, sitting at your kitchen table with your dog running around and your family running around and the TV on and people knocking on the door. So I'd rather come here every day so this worked out right now. The best thing that came out of this is it, it really woke us to the online world and what we can do online as far as teaching and, and learning. I think I've, I've learned, not learned, revisited the value of what school counselors do, what I do, um, and the life that you know, the students bring. I don't know that I've ever lost that because it's always been my favorite part of the job is being with the students. Um, but I, I was reminded of how important they are to me and um, how much I learned from them being together and how much I value the, 
those relationships with them and their and their parents and guardians as well. I think students, um, everyone's different, obviously. Um, some students have really um, communicated effectively and other students, you know, struggle with that. I think the aspect of being online for both schoolwork and, you know, like hobbies and things that you guys enjoy doing after school, I think that that has proven to be a lot for some for some students. Um, however, I do, even with like when kids are in the building, you'll get an email, hey, can I come down? Or, you know, what period are you available? So I think it opened up um, an additional lane for them to directly communicate with us, um, opposed to having to go through um, someone else. Um, students have really been uh, resilient. They learned about different technology. They've had to learn how to use Microsoft Office, email, etc. And these are all skills that are really gonna prepare them for life outside of high school. Uh, time management has also been a big issue. We all learned about time management. It was a struggle for me too at the beginning of the year, trying to manage and juggle and, and figure out expectations. Uh, but we all grew from this and I hope that the students learn from that as well. That's a big positive. Learning how to work a computer, that's really about it. <laughs> this year has opened up many options for educators, um, given us a different way to communicate and a different way to teach and a different way to share information. Um, however, personally, I would like to see students five days a week, uh, every day, all day. I think that um, we all benefit from those in-person relationships. It's definitely improving. Uh, as myself, as I'm getting used to the, the new way of teaching uh, this year during the pandemic, uh, it's getting easier. Uh, it's getting easier for me because more of the students are comfortable with the uh, edgenuity, with the Teams uh, software, and so on. Because it's easier for them, it's, it's easier for me. Um, I'm, you know, most teachers are able to adapt the kids are able to adapt. It was just very difficult that first nine weeks. I think there's the most successful has been sort of learning through my mistakes. Um, some of it, as I talked about earlier, is the technology. I know things I did not know before. Um, considering what we went through closing schools back in March of 2020 to opening schools in September, I think the teachers, administration have gone above and beyond, along with a lot of other departments, which I'll mention. Um, going above and beyond what anyone could have imagined to make this a successful year as possible. Is it perfect? No, but I think it's been a success. Uh, I've done a lot more online, uh, obviously. I think that's across the board. And I've actually discovered that, at least for this physics, online can be useful. I never realized that we could actually have class the way we do now. And students, as long as they check in and tell me that they're going to be here or not they're going to be here, and everything works, you can work from home, you can work here, you're getting the same education. And I think it's pretty cool, everything that's going on in the world today that you can do a lot of stuff through technology. And since we're using Teams, I never used Teams before this. I absolutely love Teams now. And just anytime someone wants to get together with something, you don't have to do it in person. Teams is a great option. And I'd like to learn more stuff too. As a teacher, I've really been able to identify the kids who are self-motivated a lot more. Um, you've been able to learn a lot more um, ways to, to motivate kids because you can't be all the time in front of them this way to motivate kids. So I've been really learning different ways to get to them and get, get them motivated and doing stuff. When students come back after, because we have several students that came back here the fourth nine weeks, and you know, I never really seeing their face. Now they've been live in classes, but they didn't have their face. They had their, you know, the camera turned off or so on. So when I finally, after teaching them for, you know, three, nine weeks and I finally meet them. Um, yeah, I think it forced us to look at how we teach in a whole new way. Um, you know, teachers are pretty set in their routines and, you know, many of us have been doing this 20 plus years. So we're pretty set in what we do and how we do it. So, yeah, it kind of forced me to learn like new technological things like videoing myself and having to teach, you know, through a video, um, learning different ways like doing Kahoot or learning like the Nearpod or just different ways to include everybody to try to do something a little bit different. 
Um, obviously technology, I've learned a lot more about technology for teaching both the programs just to help the day-to-day -day tasks and the programs that'll help my specific subject. So that's been really good. Well, the biggest positive is I've learned to multitask a lot and I've learned to deal with technology a lot better than I have in the past because I'm not really that good at it. But unfortunately, something like this forces you to become better at it. So I would say those two things. It's just, it's neat meeting after not knowing or having these students on my rosters. And some students never attended live classes because they've been watching, they've been doing ingenuity or watching my recording of the classes. And so I've had, you know, very little contact, you know, live contact with some of these students just through email uh, or through Teams chat. Uh, so it's kind of neat meeting. Yeah, meeting the students for the first time after teaching them for you know, 90 days or 120 days or so. I like the communication aspect, being able to communicate with kids. Um, they're emailing a lot better with that. Um, and just using the posts to communicate, like just fun little items or different things. I think that makes things successful. And just... I don't know. I, I think recording the lessons, I think, has helped a lot. Even even if, like, in the past, if a student missed a class, I would just give them the notes. But now they can actually watch the video if they missed it and still get the same lesson. There's also some benefits, not just because we're not spreading COVID this way, but there's other things that I've noticed. Like, I, I haven't had as many students sick of other things, and, and teachers haven't been as sick. So that's a benefit, I think. I think it has really taught me to be more flexible, um, to be more patient, um, but also to have high expectations. So I don't know. I think, I think students, I, I, don't, I don't know that I would want to be a student right now. Um, I think that it had to teach you guys also patience and it's got to be really isolating. Like I see it with my own kids. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean. The distance away from people, the not having that like social interaction as much, I feel like that has has changed people a lot. Um, I don't know. How about you? Do you agree? We all knew this as teachers uh, about education. And, you know, some areas, some communities, some districts are financially uh, better off than other districts. But I think during this pandemic, it really showed. Uh, you know, during this at home or online learning and uh you know some districts you know the families have more money they have the resources at home they already had you know fast internet service at their house they already had laptops uh with all the different softwares and, and things you know with microsoft office already installed on laptops and printers at home uh, which made it a lot easier to do you know learn at home uh, and I think communities where, you know, households don't, they didn't have high-speed internet. Uh, kids were going to, you know, McDonald's to get their free internet or the library uh, parking lot to, to log, log in and get online. Uh, so I think with this pandemic, it really exposed the differences with school districts that have money or neighborhoods that have money compared to other neighborhoods in the districts that are uh, lacking in those funds. Well, you know, I've been preaching this for the last 10 years that we keep moving more and more online and, uh, you know, it's here to stay. So, uh, yeah, uh, grab on, hang on to it and let's go. Take it slow. I, you know, being somebody who's like extroverted and likes to be out and about, like I was always on the go, 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 go. Let's do this, let's do that. And the pandemic really put a halt on a lot of the things I do. Um, and it, it caused me to like refocus on other things um, and just take a step back and relax and kind of just, you know, look at the sky or smell the flowers or, you know, whether, whatever corny phrase people say, but, um, I, I do feel like, you know, everyone can just take a step back and just take it a little bit slower. I think we can all enjoy life a little bit more if 
we just realized what good thing, even if it's a few, what good things we have right now. Breathe deep, smile big. <laughs> Hang on tight, you know? <laughs> be patient with your own selves the way that you would be with your best friend. Um, remember that traumatic experiences, and we've all been traumatized, I believe, by this pandemic, by the way it's affected us, even if we didn't lose anyone um, in our family or close to us or, you know, didn't lose jobs or, or homes or things like that, it still affected us. And I think we need to be patient with ourselves and each other and re-entering the world in a closer way that, that we've known it for our lives than it has been in the past year um, and just be kind to each other and supportive and, and understand that we've we've all been through something and you know hopefully it makes us better at um, caring for others and more compassionate and more empathic hopefully I would like to take the time to thank everybody for working together and that includes teachers and administ administrators aides secretaries cafeteria workers security janitors everybody for keeping this place clean I know the cafeteria workers did a heck of a job with our lunches um, and I want to give a special shout out to Ms. Kulikowski because she is the technology genius up here and she's helped me out in so many ways with uh, technology to help my students learn. Don't quit. We have to embrace the hard. And um, that's something that I've seen with my own kids. They're, my oldest is in middle school and you know my youngest is in elementary school and it looks, middle school is really different for my, my oldest. It's not easy. Um, I know, same thing here. I know it's hard and it's really easy to give up, um, especially when you don't have your teacher in front of you. Like you don't have to look them in the eye and see, oh, I, you know, I disappointed them or I don't have to face it. So I think it's really easy to, to kind of quit when things get hard. And one of the things I definitely think that students gonna have to remember is that you gotta push through, like you have to. And you gotta do it for you because walking away with a diploma is what's best for you. You know, and if you practice quitting when it's hard, your whole life is going to be quitting when it's hard. I think that we should just all uh, stick in there, you know, uh, embrace whatever uh, our new normal is, uh, get as much as we can possibly get out of it, and just uh, communicate with each other. Reach out if you need anything. Um, don't, you know, sit back and allow the circumstances to take you over. That's all. And, I'll, and I, it's funny because I have my email dings one way, and then when people join a class, that dings another way, and then there's other sounds that come from the, uh, a theme that I have on, and things are always dinging and beeping, and students think that's hilarious because then I get confused, and I don't know what's going on. You need me to redo anything? You care if I get that real quick? How about you? Have you been okay? Well, I'm the person supposed to be asking you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I got, no, I got detailed answers. I just, I just hope I don't fold. You gotta, like, do that woosa. <laughs> Calm your nerves. Get a little bit of, of yoga and meditation in your body and, like, be like, okay, I'm going in. I move around. You know me. I'm antsy, bro. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Darcy, he... <laughs> Every day I have to deal with him and his smart comments. Sponsored by a Clean and Natural Hand Sanitizer. It will clean your hands and you will leave with a lemon scent, so smelling good. You know, I remember when it first started, I saw you at Target that one time. <laughs> you got any, you got any uh, funny stories? Do I look at the camera? <laughs>